thank you all for attending. Um, so meeting call to order at uh, 8 30. Um, let's go around the table, introduce ourselves. My name is Bob Camber. I'm the chairperson for the Canby Traffic Safety Commission. I'm uh, Council President Tracy Ensley, liaison to this commission. Uh, Jackie Jones, one of the commission and the yeah. secretary. <laughs> I'm Deanna Balkarb, and I'm the <coughs> chairman. Uh, Clint Coleman, member of the committee. I'm Ian Lambert, citizen. Gary Bryant, member of the committee. Russ Langridge, back up. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AJ Miller, Candy Police, traffic unit. Spencer Pollock, Candy Public Works. Eric Van Zandt, member of the committee. Uh, Lana Bollinger, uh, interested citizen. And Bernard Weedage, also a citizen. Okay, great. Um, <coughs> and as of right now, I don't have anybody on Zoom, um, but that is available. Uh, for, for the record, uh, Jenny Tristel had called me just a little while ago and said she's really sick, and so she's not able to join us either on Zoom or at the meeting. So I wish her well. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I wish her well. Yeah. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the, the, the minutes of the September 14th meeting? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second that. Um, I have one point of order. Can I get a copy of that before I go home? We can try to get to I'm my to Um Point of order, under, um, Under new business, when we were talking about the flex, uh, the red flex, red flex system, um, there was a discussion about. Uh, it says the concerns are the officers has to one validate the tickets that arise from the red flex system, stating that somebody read a red flag. Well, the reality is that used to be the way. That, as I was explaining last night. There has been some amendments to the red flag system, like in Portland, they can hire civil servants who are trained, who then can give that kind of validation to the ticket, freeing the police officers not to have to do that. Um, so I just thought I'd bring that clarification okay, that that makes it a lot palatable, more palatable. It's than still safe stuff, yeah. Pardon me? It's still city staff. It's not like volunteer. It is a city staff, as okay. opposed to it, it has to be a civil servant. civil servant trained in how to do that, uh, as opposed to a sworn officer. Sworn officer, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you could approve those with those changes. Yeah, I'll um, approve with the changes that Bob made about, about explaining the red flags more. <laughs> and I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. And once again, you know, I just want to acknowledge <coughs> for Jackie, there are four pages in the minutes. And awesome job. That's enough. That's, that's, that's a two lot. hours worth of time. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the effort. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda is our citizen input. And I'm going to go down my list here. We have quite a few people. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Bernard because he's he. My history has shown that he's his complaint was several months ago, um, but it took us, you know, for we needed to wait to September to be able to really track the traffic. His concern is on in Southeast Lo Locust Street that there is speeding going on that street, and he's concerned about the safety of his family and kids. Have I captured you correctly? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, there's a vast number of families on that road. There's multiple apartment complexes. So yeah, uh, lots of kids uh, and lots of speeding going through that yeah. through the street. Right. And so we waited until the school time to be able to really track the traffic to, to realize that during school time, more kids are. Um, thank you, Spencer, for putting out the digital speed sign. Uh, reader and we were able to get the data in and i put together a report trying to make it a little bit more simplistic for people to be able to read um, as i note in my email 
I'm not a professional. Um, so this is my humble opinion to kind of put the data together. Um, you also received in your emails a copy of the data if you ever wanted to go through it. <laughs> it's like 150 or 120 pages or something like that. So yeah, yeah. Bob condenses it down pretty good. <laughs> so um, I believe you. Did I send you one? No, I'm not seeing this. Okay, I apologize. I actually was here to follow up. I had I was not aware what the device necessarily looked like and didn't see anything go up, so I was unaware that any of this data had been collected. So this is yeah. new. great. I mean, that's kind of why I was here to follow up. So the if I can real quick, well, the device is really small, and okay. so no one sees it, so they don't know that there's a study going on, so we get actual real life. Yeah, I, for some reason I figured it was a line across the street and that said that's what everybody is saying. So I'm okay, cool. And I will give you my copy to take home. Okay, cool. Okay, and, and I can turn it up. Um, in this report, it, as you guys know, I'm going to go real quickly through it. Uh, to this is actually the Northwest Territorial. No. No, no it's the South Locust. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I oh, that, that is an error. Type of error. It should be. It should sure. be north. The speed limit is 25. Yes, yeah, should be so. That should be corrected right there. I'm sorry. That's okay. I used the part of the template. There we go. Boom. Correct now. It's magical. Yes. Um, so there are two. The, the, the computer reads data on two uh, in this particular study. For both ways of traffic, the southbound traffic on that road and then the northbound traffic on that road. And um, it breaks it down by speed and it tells you the, the, the amount of traffic that flows in that. On any particular day, on this particular, on the southbound, it was 400 and 400, 438 cars were passing that on that southbound. On the northbound, on a daily basis, there were 398. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a good deal of traffic flowing on that uh, roadway. Um, and then what I did was I broke it down by the type of vehicle. What was interesting about this is that there's a heck of a lot of trucks going southbound on Locust as opposed to northbound. There are 310 trucks as opposed to 178 trucks. Now, Spencer, let's get their geography right. Southbound would mean that the car is going toward township, right? Okay. So you have a lot of trucks going that way on that <coughs> for some reason, as opposed to just the sort of one stop sign. Pardon me? One stop sign on the shoulder. Yeah. Now, also, so that's a point of contention. Then I broke, then the, the speed study breaks it down into increments of speed. Um, in this case, any person driving under the uh, 25 makes up about 87% of the, of the cars that were driving, which is an extremely high percentage. In our other studies, it's usually a lot, a lot, well, not a lot less, but it's a little bit more around 60%. This is a, this, in effect, you're saying that between 87% and 91% of the drivers are going below the speed limit. Um, then between 26 and 30 miles, which is five miles of, you know, flexibility, um, you have another 11% and 7%. Um, in effect, you have 98% of the drivers pretty much conforming with the, with the traffic rules and laws. All right. Which is a very high, very high number. In all our other studies, Spencer, confirm for me, you, you've seen all the studies that we've done. That's an extremely high number. I was surprised to see that. I was surprised too. It was this close. Usually, the 85th percentile is about six to eight miles over the posted speed limit. Yeah. So there's still quite a bit outlined out of that. Where 
numbers on this one, I think the 85th percentile was, I think, actually under the speed limit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can correct me, I there's not that much patrol um, on that street. Because I, I live on that drive on the street daily. I don't see a lot of patrols. So that's really good. Um, so when we look at the next set of uh, speed limits, 10 to 6 to 10 miles over the speed limit, we have um, 42, 46 vehicles, and um, there were 65 vehicles. Um, this perks down to less than 1% of the vehicles. Um, and what we're talking about is one uh, southbound is four vehicles per day. And the other one is 2.5 vehicles per day, which is concerning, <coughs> but that's a very slow frequency rate um, compared to other parts of town. Um, and then we go on to look at the concerning is when you start reaching uh, 16 miles over the speed limit, miles over the speed limit, and we're getting um, four vehicles and seven vehicles, which reflects about one vehicle per day uh, or half a vehicle per day, um, one and a half vehicles going that speed. Now that's a very high speed for that for that roadway. But once again, the frequency of it is, is really hard to catch um, over a 24 hour period. Um, and finally, um, vehicles going really fast, 16 to 42 miles over the speed limit. You have two vehicles and three vehicles, but this is over a 16 day period. Um, is there any pattern as to what time of the day or night those five speeds are taking place? I wasn't able to discern that. I mean, um, that would take there's 100 pages of data to we, find those. We could, we could do that. I could dive through and try to see if there was a pattern. Um, seems like every time I've tried to dive through there, it's, I don't ever see a pattern emerge, but I. Check that kind of thing. Check, so, check on this, uh, the mini band with the soccer mom. <laughs> Every time I practice, so, so, you concerned. know, there is a there is you can see that there's a there is a pattern in that there are peak hours, and uh, and they're usually at seven o'clock and three o'clock, and then uh, eight o'clock and three o'clock are the the high patterns. Uh, Interesting in reference in previous studies that we've done, and we've done them all over the city, the high speeders don't necessarily occur always at peak hours. They're usually unusual hours early in the morning, late at night. Uh, and so they're, they're outliers that are really hard to catch because the police officer's not going to sit there at those types of hours in one particular part of town. Um, discussion, folks. Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, and certainly, John, yes. does that thoroughfare have an adequate number of crosswalks? And um, if it does or doesn't, that's a consideration. Then also, are there is there signage that uh, identifies where bus stops take place and other, other things like that? Don't think that there is any bus stop signage in there. And then, as far as crosswalks, I don't think that there is a painted crosswalk on that street. So there's no, no there's no painted. There is a crosswalk. There's, there's a crosswalk no painted, painted across, across the street. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's just the sidewalk. sidewalk. Yeah. 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 That might be a suggestion to have public works take a look and see if they recommend some crosswalks. Be put in, and, and if, if so, where? And then, uh, um, 
Hey, Jay, do you know, Officer Miller, do you know, are the bus stop signage, is it, in your opinion, is that pretty effective for? Are you talking about the cat bus stops? Or well, no, it's like a school bus stop. You can get these the signs yeah, that indicate that a bus stop is for a panic. So, for so I haven't dealt with those much yet. I haven't had any complaints about them uh, yet, at least. But the only problem with that on that street is that there's like roughly four to six stops just within that short distance. Oh. I mean, if school bus. Like yeah, literally, <laughs> they do. If they could condense them. So if you say bus stop and ahead, bus stops yeah. ahead. Or something. Exactly, yeah, you literally have them. I mean, there'd be more signs in the street um, lined up because they make so many stops. There. But if, the, if you can get the school to the condense them, it may be. Well, uh, I think part of that is because you have so many apartment complexes, yeah. and so you have so many young kids like Canada. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We we'll only have a bus well, stop. A little so little exactly. <laughs> the bus stops are already. Yeah, so that's exactly. Are there sign? Is there signage on that street saying what the speed limit is? There is a. I, I know for for certain that there's a sign right as you turn the corner from the Township onto Lucas. So if you're in the town, uh, I'm sure there's on the other side. I don't think there's one second. I think there is one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Second. Yeah. You turn from, from second onto right. Yeah. Right. There. So it both ends the street and is posted. That person mother long. <laughs> so no there. That's actually pretty <laughs> low. Might <laughs> be easier to notice the sign. So, so. That I'm out of <laughs> and I take it from these pictures, there is a sidewalk running on one side of the street. That, that's correct. Yeah. There is a sidewalk running. That's what I'm saying. Do I run all the way or is there a uh, There the is. Run all the way. I, I think it runs all the way, and maybe a small. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Yeah, on that side. Yeah, that side. All that hits. Yes. Okay. Um, Any thoughts? Yeah. 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 I guess my thought is this: uh, you know, at the end of the day, the the day is great. I mean, that's better than having to do anything, really. I mean, I obviously my my experience with this street is not reflective of this data, but like I said, the data shows that people really aren't speeding that much on that street. So that's the, whether maybe we shouldn't have waited till, I don't know, but nonetheless, no, I'm just glad people aren't speeding like I thought they would. And like I said, the data reflects that. So we appreciate any person coming to our community to express your concerns at any time. At yeah. any time. So you're always welcome. Um, perhaps that in his experience was summer related. And people who live in the area know there's the holes all around the school time and so just inherently slow yeah. down in the fall and winter months, perhaps. Could have been. I could have been, you know. Yeah, a little sun in the brain, summertime, people get crazy. Either way, at the end of the day, I really don't want people speeding when it's there's kids around and yeah. then is showing that that's not as happening in my head. So well it does happen. And yes. it's, it's harsher. It, it, and we will acknowledge that that is a concern and a problem. It's just how much resources that we can devote to, to, sure. to solving this problem. Um, what I will, so, I, if it's appropriate, I'd just like to make a motion to have the public works take a look at that street and see if if they recommend crosswalks and uh, possibly additional signage. And then one safety measure as a citizen, uh, I would suggest is when it's kids are coming home from on the school bus, uh, Officer Miller, wouldn't it be good those flags that you could hold up so they could, as they're crossing, just to alert cars, you know, be extra cautious. Flags that you could hold up? Oh, like people crossing a crosswalk. Sometimes you see those at schools, mm -hmm. school crossing. Oh, like a crossing guard? <coughs> yeah. Or just people that are crossed? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you have a big amount of people crossing, it might that could be potentially be added uh, safety measure. Certainly. I mean, Law requires if a bus stops and flashes its light, all traffic on both sides is supposed to stop. Um, in theory. In theory. <laughs> um, but I don't hear, hear any yeah. complaints about that particular. Thing. I haven't seen a lot of that. The road's pretty skinny as it is, so yeah. it, it'd, be, it'd be pretty 
pretty hard to do that to begin with, I think, unless, you know, it's very clear. I, I would not be a pro, I mean, I think uh, a painted crosswalk at the park makes a lot of sense. Uh, at the stop sign, um, just kind of in between Locust Street, and that wouldn't be a bad spot for a crosswalk either. Um, it's a three way stop. So either of those can be looked at. That would be a little place where I could, I could do it right here. That would be one. Is there a second for my motion? Second, guys. Now, what is your motion? Oh, I move that uh, public works take a look at that thoroughfare, and if they deem that it's appropriate to add uh, cross bars, I move they do so. And and you said signage too. It is. You know, signage. Yeah, they recommend signage. All right. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So what we're going to do is follow up with make sure the adequate signage is possible. In addition, I will make a copy of this um, traffic study and send it to the police department. So, no, uh, Officer Miller already got it. But with the request for to place the you know, digital yeah. sign machine yeah. on your street within the next week or so. Just to kind of, and they usually you leave it there for at least a week or so. Yeah, the one on Maple has been there for a week and a half. Okay. So we just leave it out there until the batteries run dead. And then if they want it out there longer, then we'll just recharge the battery and bring it back out there. So it usually lasts about a week or so. Just that I'm hoping that that will catch the eye of the outliers sure. who are speeding a little bit and maybe give them some awareness. You know, we all think we're too important. Um, so maybe that would be. Yeah, sure. Sure. And I can chip in and say that in your defense, from somebody who stands on the side of the road on traffic stops and have people fly by me all the time, uh, five miles an hour really is noticeable when you're standing on the side mm -hmm. of the road. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, and 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 to be honest, uh, it, it makes sense with all those trucks, right? I, I know trucks a lot of times are sound a little bit louder than they're actually moving. I'm sure there's some of that. Right? Yeah, some of it is just. My frustration with it. And so I'm glad the data came the way it did, but I appreciate everything else. And it does look fast. I mean, it does. And, it, and maybe it is fast. <laughs> you know, question yeah. Did we meet your goal? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the goal. Yeah. 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 All right, moving us along. Um, uh, Elaine, 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 yeah. Elaine. Yeah. Uh, you came to us last time. Yes. And I usually try to summarize as best I can and yes. tell me if I missed it. Um, you you have concerns about the speeding on uh, Maple Street. Yes. That's the street between. Uh, and part of Maple is the from territorial down to the. Uh, at least 21st. the first um, golf course. Well, 21st. Okay. Yeah, mainly because it's the it, everything else is wider. So, and so um, this has been an ongoing issue about the development of that roadway um, and uh, <coughs> concerns about the speeding in the sense that there's no sidewalks on that street. And the cars are speeding. And there's no sidewalk so that pedestrians are having to compete for space with the speeding cars. Uh, it's been a concern that since the, the, the golf course further development, including uh, putting in a rec physical recreation place, it has cre increased the, the traffic and the, the speed of the traffic. Now, you have came to request uh, permission to put up a, a new sign that is a little bit more demonstrative about kids, golf carts, walkers, animals, da 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 da. So, with the idea that it would catch people's eye and they would slow down. Have I captured the concern? I think you have, but just same reason, you know, um, you you experience something and then it's gone, right? I took lots of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pass that around. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> they think I'm special now in my neighborhood. 
In fact, this one guy went by and um, he goes, do you want me to stand in the middle right now? <laughs> I said, no, that's okay. <laughs> <For spatial relations. laughs> anyway, um, I think basically for me, if there's any questions, um, this is just so that you have this. So you, I don't maybe, my uh, appearance doesn't have to be so important as to keep this in your remembrance. But there's a lot of really dangerous things here in, in these. And I was missed out the last two weeks since our last meeting. This is Geneva summer. So um, since it is kind of uh, seasonal, um, it's kind of um, hard to capture what we have all summer as well. But um, we have a lot of vehicles and we have pedestrians. And we have a very narrow road that's 20 feet four inches in most places where I am and um, with the dump trucks and other kind of vehicles that are large going two ways, um, pedestrians don't fit. And we've had a lot of close calls. Um, just in the last two weeks, we had a lady who had to jump off the road and in doing so injured herself. And I, she came to my door, luckily, and I took her home because she couldn't walk. <laughs> so I don't know about liability on that. Um, mainly because one thing is I have a list of everything that I've done concerning the safety. It's been since 1996, I've been trying to get help with that portion of the road. And um, I, I have, and that's what all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna share about what I've done. And then if there's any questions, I would answer them. But um, started in 1996, I went to a city planning meeting. Um, I went to a neighborhood meeting in 2017. I called city planning multiple times. I know Laney very well now because of uh, calling the planning um, department. City council, when we had uh, different things going through, I talked about the safety on Maple Street. I had two city or city councilors who actually came to the site. One did live there. Tracy um, Pike lived over there, had a concern. I called county transportation. Mr. Hickson came out and visited the site. Um, uh, I've come to two, well, this will be my fourth traffic safety meeting that I've come to present. I made a connection with Willamette Valley Country Club, and I met and actually had a meeting with um, Allison there, and we're in communication. Um, uh, my advocate, safety advocate, Bob Canberra, we had meetings, and then we went to see Martha Schrader and Mike Besner from the County Transportation Department. We followed up with a meeting with Mike Besner. He actually came out and visited the site. Um, uh, I called Brian Brown at planning a, a couple of times. Um, I, and then at one point, when I got really frustrated, I called and had uh, the city administrator, Mr. Robinson, come out to the site. Um, Jerry came when my house flooded and talked about the traffic and the safety. And he was so, that he was great. Anyway, but he was there a couple of times and, and helped call us and, uh, and uh, recognize the problem. Um, I ordered a travel trailer about five times or more. Um, I talked to three different police officers over the years. Um, and so I kind of put some time and dues in trying to get help over there, just in that little spot, just from just in that little spot. The one addition now is the church that was so small is folded and there's a new church going in that's larger. It's uh, Christ the King Church is going in next door, and there's uh, they have a couple hundred in membership there. So the mm -hmm. it, yeah, that's it's pretty funny. exciting over there, Tracy. Anyway, um, wow. Yeah, so you're, de you're dealing with a higher power now. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but, 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 but no question: Is yes. that with them coming in? Are they helping to improve traffic? No, because there being more cars. No, and you know the way. I would invite all of you to come over to that area and just stop. You can even stand in my driveway if you want to do. But it's an interesting place because the narrowness, it, it was the planning. When they, when they, the country club estates, when they plan the estates, there's this one area where the houses are butted up so close together that it's so narrow, this one little spot in the road. And then our part of the road, since it was 1970s or 60s, right. um, they didn't improve. But since it was county, we didn't approve the, the width right. of it. They right. put a ship seal and other stuff on there. Yeah, and and so um, as things went in down the road closer to the river, 
right. everything had to be the right with newer it. dimensions. Yeah. So at, right at 21st, it just pops right out. I right. mean, you know, but that one narrow section where those two houses went up right there, yeah. we have so many close calls there. And just in the pictures, if you can look there, you can see there's a man. I put two pictures of a man pushing the stroller with his little daughter. In the front, there's one when he's look, he's just walking alongside the road, but he wanted to cross the road. So at the very last page, you can see his face. His face is going like this <laughs> because he's trying to get through the traffic. And um, it's it's very hairy there because it's so narrow. And when people pass, you can see in the pictures how close. I mean, I'm standing in my yard, how close people are. And when they go by each other, um, sometimes they'll have to stop and go single file because the vehicles are so large. It's been accentuated with the all of the construction at the end of the road and all of the vehicles like, uh, you know, here with the public utilities and also with um, uh, public works coming and all the different people who are having to service them out there as well, which I don't understand how you do all this. How do you do all these things? Um, because they're going all the time. You've got about all these places in the whole city and they're, they're so attentive to all these developers. Anyway, um, we have, yeah, I think that one thing is, is I don't know what the solution is because Jerry said they're really widening the road with sidewalks right now is not an option. No. Down the road where Mr. Sprague actually did a little, a little walking path on one side, that has been successful down at the end of the road because it does give a separate place for pedestrians. I don't know if that would be an option, but signs would just be kind of like a token <laughs> hey, we're thinking about this. This is unsafe. Can you slow down? Most of the people that go by are people from out of the neighborhood. So they're people who are delivering uh, fish at the country club or Lowe's or, yeah, and, or, yeah, and all the, with the development at the end of the road now, it's not just one developer. What's happened is these, all these people, all these different people bought the different lots, okay? So you have not just one dump truck coming out of there from one place, you have six, seven different companies of dump trucks going by now instead of just uh, can be excavation. You have all these other ones plus can be excavation. So um, it's it's just a very unsafe place. And so um, the, the country club said that they would help pay for the signs if public works was okay with it or if they would help us put them up. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I think you know, and we're all we just want our neighborhood to be safe. So I hear there's two sets of solutions that have been brought up numerous times for this this roadway. One is a temporary fix; it's a sign. I turned to Spencer last time. Jerry kind of, you can check for Jerry. Okay. Last time I got the impression from Jerry that there wouldn't be a problem in putting up a, a, a further sign in that area. And it has a lot of signage right now, but a more demonstrative sign to catch people's attention would not be a problem. But I'm still not with words in his mouth because he's not here. I don't have a problem with uh coming up with some sort of a sign to make, uh, to put up. Uh, the verbiage, we probably would have to kind of go over a little bit. We found one, I gave him a- Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, and Allison at the country club, mm -hmm. she also has uh, has okay it. Okay. I didn't do anything until I ran it up top of the pole first, so. Okay, my but, impression is that the country club is willing to buy the sign. Yeah, and they're, and, yeah, she's, she's just, just concerned as I am. And I'm fine with putting up signs. Uh, the one thing is that would just be the location, trying to make sure that it's not one sign behind another sign to where sure. we have sign clutter, because once that happens, people won't pay attention to the sign. So try and make sure that it's somewhere that stands out, grabs attention. And the direction. And it's yeah, right and the direction. Where's the, where's the most bang for your buck, which is right. Is the speeding coming from the country club or is it going to the country? It's both, but 
you know, if the road kind of goes downhill, it's kind of like when you ride your bike. I didn't realize how much it kind of goes down. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so I was on my bike and that was fun, but um, <laughs> that's why is because it's you know, and, and a lot so where, of those. Wait, what direction do you think? Uh, you have, unless you're going to get two signs. I would do two, and there's a safety zone for school. Sign. There's no school there now. That school is completely gone. It's gone. The so. school is gone, but for the church closed. Okay. Yeah. So if you want, if all we have to do is get the sign and maybe use the pole that exists there for the one sign, okay. but then on the other part where it was maybe coming from the country club, I don't know, down uh, closer to the river, that direction, okay. um, what a good place Try would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. jurisdiction yeah. is it, say it's county and the city. What, what it's not county, no. The, it, it was is, turned over to the city. It has just been turned yeah. over. One of the biggest stumbling blocks for all this year has been that it was a county and they were not interested. <laughs> no, you can say it. Exactly. <laughs> they were not interested. In they were not interested in planning tax <laughs> They weren't interested in putting signs on it. The country club has been there since 1963. Right. So, yeah. There's been a lot of change, obviously. Yeah. The, the world. And, and the wonderful thing about this, though, is you know you want them to thrive, right? right? It's just the way that they went about it with the conditional. And if you watch YouTube, I put that in there on purpose. But okay, if, what they did was they they okayed the development and okayed with the stipulations with the country club with them one month with each other. So basically, nobody was thinking about maybe there's something about the road width or mm -hmm. maybe signage or because of the, the improvements happening. They did it back to back. And so it kind of caught everybody kind of like, uh, nobody was watching us at Christmas time when they got the country club here. So <laughs> it was like, they've, they've had, <laughs> this county's had ample opportunity yeah. to do something and notification and information up the kazoo. They've chosen not to. Uh, the roadway has been turned over to the city. Now, with not extremely a lot of funds, but with some funds to do some work. I think this should be returned to our agenda for next month to really start to talk to the city, uh, public works, Tracy, about that at least at the minimum, this should be, this roadway should be considered for some future capital improvement budget. How much infringement do you have on existing neighbors? Do you want to we have, have we actually do have and I can show you, we actually do have easements on both sides of these roads, ample so that there is ample room to put in a sidewalk on at least one side of this road. But well, yeah, right here on the church side, especially, yes. they obviously don't need that stretch of dirt that has no. a school sign on it that they don't, they don't need anymore. Well, that's why I was wondering <laughs> if the church, if they end up planning. I don't think they're doing any. Changes to the building, though. There's the Rihanna. Okay. She's going there. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an existing building that, that so, it's used to be. I used to go to that church years and years ago. Okay. Um, before I switched, but um, it's that building's been there forever. Okay. So, I, but I mean, I'm willing as I, I just started going there in the summer. So, uh, but I I went to school with the pastor. Uh, Tim Davis and I went to school together along with his wife. So uh, I'm willing to kind of help out with um, maybe seeing if maybe I can work something out with Tim. Is to donate a sidewalk? <laughs> Is that a <laughs> <you> <laughs> Well, yeah. first of all, you have to coordinate that. There, but, but, it, but it has to be with yeah, I sent to a friend who goes there, so sometimes he goes. Sometimes. A, That's lovely funny for him. It's used to be. Putting in a sidewalk in an area is not as easy of a project as it sounds. Um, I know from experience that it it it, it takes a carry out the world way. It creates curves and things like that. But this is a project that's been long and it's coming. It's it's been talked about for years. A lot of effort. I think it should be on the agenda for next month for a discussion about. Recommending that it be put on the CIT budget at some point. Put that off because the present CIT budget is projected out five years or four years now. 
but you know, and all of those are big necessary projects too. But at some point, this needs to be addressed, and so I think that should be on. I make a motion that we at least accept step number one and accept the signage and get that. Uh, up. I'll second that. All those approved. Aye. Aye. Uh, is there any objections to it be on the agenda? And Spencer, you can ask Jerry. I got yeah. that discussion next month like about give you fair warning mm -hmm. that we're going to be talking about Maple Street and doing some serious renovations to that roadway. There's not a miracle here, folks. I mean, if, if you get on CIP, the CIP presently is up to 95, right? Of 2005, 25, 25 or 26 now. Yeah. So, you know. Does that ever get shuffled, reprioritized? So it's just because it's scheduled for something that isn't guaranteed that it will happen in that year. Sometimes it gets bumped up, sometimes something else happens and it gets bumped back. So uh, a good example of that was uh, third and fourth street. Right. Years ago in front of the fairgrounds. That was yeah. funny. Think... And then we get grant funding that helped push that up the list. Yeah. So there is other things that yeah. Yeah, happen. Like, yeah, he's kind of a chalkboard. It, it really is. <laughs> it really is a chalk. But some of the, the, I just want to tell you, some of the things that are listed in would be just the powerful arguments. The city has lots of old roadways, especially on the north side, that need changing and need sidewalks. I mean, it's a, it's a competition. But the first thing in any competition is to get on the playing field. Even if it, and you're there. Even, even if it's several years out, if you're on the list, that's an accomplishment and, and, and we haven't got there yet. So we need to push to get on the list. Did, okay. did planning work with the developer? Because I know like when subdivisions go in, there's some cost at the developer because they're going to be adding traffic over there. I know back when I was a kid, I, I rode my bike, walked over that neighborhood and I'm actually surprised my parents let me do it because it was so narrow back there. But um, with the development that went in, it seems like with them bringing in more homes, more traffic, were there any costs involved with planning to help with stuff? Yes. At the time, at the, at, the, at the time, at the time, traffic studies done. By Lancaster Mold says there was not going to be an impact on the on the road. Yeah. And so uh, some of us tested those traffic studies, but um, rather well, bigger study, but um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. In any case, like, instead of we're not going to spend the whole morning uh, regurgitating history stuff. We're going to look at the future. So we're going to get into signage and we'll have next month. Um, uh, you know where we meet. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and so, please come back for a, a discussion about moving this some type on a, to a CIP, but city CIP budget, so that it can be get a final answer. How's that? That would be great. All right. Thank you. Um, this is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Sure <laughs> 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 joins, I can give you another one that she had produced earlier. Yeah, but you know she's, what? She's gonna produce. You've got some great people here, and he he deserves it next week. These two guys right here, they deserve it. Yes, we've been blessed with some pretty fantastic chairs in this commission. So I had to do them. Go, I had to do them. I've got to move this along because I've got two other citizens on track. Here on track. <laughs> on track. Um, Lorna, you brought up Lana. 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 You brought up and and Gail. Yes, she was here too. Yes. Brought up a concern last month. And I want to uh, so I'm bringing it up for our discussion and working to do something. Um, about Pine Street, Pine and Territorial. 
It was a concern that there is not a, there's not enough painted restriction on at that intersection. So it has created a site problem, especially for people trying to turn that they're having to go far out into the roadway, into the uh, bike paths, to be able to see. Uh, this is coupled with the fact that Territorial has, has the traffic flow and the volume has increased significantly. We have brand new apartment buildings there. Yeah. And you can see that people, uh, there is no yellow marking on either side, so cars tend to park. They park all the way to the end of that, right. that white line there. I live on Pine, so I understand yeah. what they're no, talking yeah. about. If you can't see, you're in the bike lane, you're doing the mess to get around. <laughs> yeah, and my wife and I walk on this thing a lot, so I understand. So, I don't know, I share the I can't make it. Um, you know, in one of the pictures we all got on the email, there was that one um, a van on the corner. So as you're coming down the line toward Territorial, you couldn't see the stop yes. sign. And so my question is, if you made that so you couldn't park where that van was parking, where would that van be able to park? Well, that and particular it's person in that, in that house has something like, yes, he has that van. He has a truck, he has four cars, he has two trailers. He is like Mr. Toad. He, he likes vehicles. And it's a man and his son and his son's girlfriend live in there. They have way more cars than they, than they can possibly house. And I have a follow-up question. Is that bus stop located in an appropriate spot given all this? Well, the bus comes and goes. If you could park, if you could paint that curve from that corner all the way to the bus stop, which is, I don't know, 50 feet, it would help with the visibility. The bus could still stop there. Up that line. Where is the bus stop? Oh, it, it's a, it's right. Right. Yeah. oh on territory. Yeah, right oh, there. Gotcha. And so in that direction, looking east, you could get better visibility. The major problem, the worst problem is if you're pulling out there and you want to go west. Yes. I have to pull. And I have a high the visibility. I'm up six feet. If I'm in a low car, which I'm only four, if I'm only four feet off the ground, that's my line of vision. It's even more dangerous. But I have to be sitting up, so my line of vision is at least six feet off the ground. I'm creeping out there. And I, if I have, I'm a Volkswagen Vanagon. So there's no front to it, basically. If I were in a low profile car with an engine up in front of me, I would have to get way, way out there in order to see to the left, to the west. And it's dangerous. And there's more and more traffic on that road. It's just constantly busy. And there are people speeding up. We should put one of those little meters on there. And they've been for a couple of weeks just to see. Well, territory is the most frequent use stop. Yeah, it is. I think it is. Yeah. different parts of territory. Be like crazy. And it's, you know, CO2 vibration, noise, you name it, whatever's coming out there. It's not healthy. It's like something. So, well, I would recommend. I would recommend I'll somebody make, make a motion that, that says this. at least public works should paint the intersection yellow according to our present standard, which is, I believe, the, the, uh, it is 30 feet from the apex of the intersection, which is like the middle of the intersection. It's not so, going to be big enough. Well, we can start somewhere else. I'm just following our present rules and state law. Okay. Let us paint something and see what the impact is, okay? And then if it doesn't work, then we'll have to re-examine and try to see about making exceptions. But that intersection does not even have standard. I mean, we can't fix all the 
that intersection doesn't even have the standard yellow paint right now. And we're asking for a stop sign there on that. On, that. on the other side of the street, you go to your right, right? The stop sign on Territorial right there. Coming, coming from the west. I, I realize I realize that that's gonna be harder to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are there. There, I, we have another gentleman who wrote us a letter asking for four-way stops on on Maple Street, yeah. and you guys are asking on Pine Street. Yeah, and I just want to let you know that the city is in the process of putting in a four-way stop on Redwood. Okay. Redwood in Territorial, which is the first four-way stop that we were able to negotiate and, and get implemented. Um, because there's no that, stop signs on that street at all. You drive 35 miles an hour off from one end to the other. That is and, a problem. And you have to take into account all of these hundreds of people that are uh, moving in on Pine Street with those housing. All the hundreds of people down on Maple Street, all the hundreds of people down on Locust Street. There are hundreds of people moving into this town, into those new homes. I, this is not just a current problem, it's an increasing problem for the future. Bob, I have a motion I'd like to have you consider. I'd like to make a motion that Public Works take a look at the intersection of North Pine at Territorial and where they deem appropriate and yellow stripe. If possible on both sides. Where they deem appropriate. They deem appropriate. And, and doable. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And why can't you paint it red instead of yellow? Red would be for Aye. vehicles. It is a no part for <laughs> uh, fire, uh, police, or something along those lines. So it's a, it's a special designation. But the yellow, the yellow is no parking. Okay. It, and anytime some, you see somebody parking in a yellow, you can call the police non emergency number and police officer available comes out or code enforcement because a yellow is no parking. Red is a different designation. Emergency vehicles. And if it's deemed a hazard, it can be checked. If it's in it, yes. Yeah. So, so it is. It, Thank you. Yeah. Now, the four way stop issue. It's a longer conversation. Longer conversation. <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm trying to be honest with you and, and say it, it's not like it's not needed, but we got one big hurdle that we're trying to overcome and putting one in. At uh, uh, Redwood and Territorial. And I guess we're going to have to wait until that's in to see the impact of that before we start deciding to put in more four ways all the way up Territorial. That is interesting because of, you think that the development would be linked, what, part of that development would be linked to public works when they know that there's hundreds of houses. With hundreds of people with hundreds of cars, and they're not thinking at all about the, well, the streets. A lot of that is coming from the traffic engineers. Yes. That's a lot of what is coming from the deciding on if there needs to be. Where are these traffic engineers in the planning department? We have a consulting firm, uh, DKS, that does. Not them. <laughs> I have read their traffic studies for. Uh, trail crossing one and trail crossing two, and they're almost common copies of each other. And they are in denial about all sorts of things, and they keep saying we're not at capacity. They want to wait until there's millions of people swarming all of those corners and those intersections and those roads before we're at capacity. I have, uh, I, have I know I can't be talking to you long. I have a big issue with that. I, I fully Crazy. appreciate your concern. And you should join when the, the city is in the process of relooking at its transportation study um, system. It's a 12 year old, 10 year old, old study. So that's yes, the traffic system plan. 2010. 
So and, it's 12 years old. If you need to and, and, and it's in the process, Mr. Hardy and planning department is forging ahead to try to convince the city council to approve uh, money to get it approved. And I think he's doing a really good job yeah, he is. of moving that. And I welcome you to try to be part of that committee because one of the things to look at is, you're right, the traffic studies are based on a level of service. And our level of service in that original traffic study is based upon E, which is next to F, which is flunky. And so all the traffic studies are based on this level capacity. And as long as you have traffic studies that have that E designation, which is the city limit, that's one of the things that the goal of Michael's is to try to boost that up to a different level, like a C or, or a B level, so that you can identify systems needs much higher. As long as you have a low threshold for pain, nothing gets changed. But they're conforming with what is presently our standard. And so the standard has to be changed. It's very exhausting. It is. Bureaucracy. So please hang in there. So we will look at pain. All right. Uh, no, this, um, I sent you guys, I'm sorry, I got it late in the evening, uh, a letter from uh, a citizen by the name of Mark Terwasser. Is, is he writing to you uh, as himself? Terwasser yeah. is writing to him as himself or as part of the bike committee? Okay. Oh, he's writing it as himself. Okay. Um, and I wasn't able to get contact him. So I'm just going to read his letter because we're not going to take action as is our standard. You know, we listen, think about it, and we come back next month. So he'll be on this. Uh, all of you have this copy, but for the record, I'm putting it on the record as to what his concern was. Okay. Dear Robert, uh, I'd like to request your permission to look at the traffic on territorial. Very appropriate. Follow yes. That's why I chose to have this follow through. On Friday, I was walking our dog at four o'clock in the afternoon. I was walking south on Maple. Uh, wanted to cross the northwest corner to the southwest corner. We were walk. Uh, we were standing on the yellow ADA marking mark pad. Approximately twenty cars and three semi trucks continued through the intersection. Several people turned right from Maple to Territorial as I was standing there. Finally, a car stopped in the eastbound lane to allow me to cross the street. The person coming west then stopped. There is no problem crossing Territorial in Holly where there is a four-way stop. I would suggest that a four-way stop be added to Maple and, and the Redwood intersections to slow traffic and allow for pedestrians to cross. An alternative would be to put a blinking light in the street like those on the logging group, uh, road trail. Also, the number of semis had increased dramatically on territory after the quiet zone curve was put on streets leading to 99E. Westbound trucks on 99 cannot make the corner without cutting off the sidewalk. Eastbound trucks are probably. I should have. That's a different issue. I'm not so sure. Um, in any case, I sent you guys a copy. You guys can read it, reflect on it, and we'll have a discussion. Um, <coughs> I want to ask another question. Have you noticed an increase in truck traffic being diverted to other areas because of the zone? Not particularly recently. Okay. I was just wondering if that was one person's impression or if we actually have more trucks on territorial now because they're trying to avoid turning. Um, yeah, I haven't seen a ton on territorial. Okay. I see them once in a while. But, uh, Most of the trucks I see are more of your construction trucks. I don't see very many of your transportation trucks. Yeah. Okay. 
my wife and I walk this the third for almost every other day or daily, and I don't notice the an increase in trucks. There's a drastic increase in traffic. There's probably an increase in dump trucks. Probably. Yeah, yeah. And those kind of yeah. construction, yeah. Yeah. The construction okay. trucks. You, the dump you trucks. Okay. Okay. Um, what is the quiet zone you're talking about? Doesn't that isn't that about the train? Yeah, yeah. but the intersections off of 99 coming into town, uh, part of the quiet zone construction included adding curbing between the, the lanes. Yeah. So then the trucks turning off of 99 have have restricted space in turn, and so some of them don't like to try it, so I'm just run over the curves, you know. So, yeah. So we'll look at this issue again about um, about this year. But one question for Officer Miller. My understanding, okay, is that even if an intersection at an intersection, even if it's unpainted, that is still a oh, there is still a invisible crosswalk. Correct. And that if somebody is standing at that crosswalk, it is it is re, the drivers are required to stop for that person. If the crop the pedestrian is making attempt or eye contact right. by crossing. So yeah. they just stand there and they're not attempting to cross and those people are just kind of yeah. you know but you still have the pedestrian still has you know the right of way. The right of way they still have to make an attempt to yeah. make eye contact with the driver and make an effort to yeah. so notify them that they're crossing. But if the, if the, if they're standing facing the roadway, you know correct it's incumbent upon the driver to have to stop or at least slow down to see if they're they actually are going. Correct. Okay. I've attempted to cross that street too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this will be on the agenda for next time. No. All right, let's go on to this. Um CIP projects. I'm gonna jump down some of you, I believe. Uh night bridge closure. Um, we're going to have that discussion in, in um, uh, next month to try to formulate a plan because we hope to have a meeting with the city uh, in December to organize planning. Just to remember, Night Bridge is. Yeah, we don't have any new information at this point. Yeah. Unless Spencer does. Yeah. So I'm in the moments. But we, no, hope no, to, we hope to at least start to have a planning meeting, a planning meeting in December to kind of start coping with how to get the message out to the group so people can. And you can well imagine if when Nightbridge closes in the summer of 2023, that's going to greatly impact traffic. I announce it at every meeting. So the nines of yes. people who watch it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nightmare, not Nightbridge. Oh, God, it's going to be a nightmare. 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 Nightmare.
uh, which has led to problems with street parking and uh, entering uh, roadways. Um, these, these have resulted in concerns in the older neighborhoods with the length of the, the width of the roadways, you know, when you have parking on both sides, the width of the roadways. Um, and with population increases in the neighboring surrounding areas, it is drastically increasing our flow through traffic, you know, territorial flow through. People use that to bypass 99. Um, uh, Bird Parkway. People use Bird Parkway to, to go off the Malala and out that way. You know, I mean, those are highly, and as those areas develop, the flow through of Canby is, is extensive. Um, development one. I talk about that our police officers do a tremendous job trying to, well, I guess it's for, for uh, uh, trying to control this, this, this problem, but they cannot be everywhere every moment of the day, plus deal with other crime. Um, so we need to look at all possible um, alternatives. In addition, future events such as Knight Bridge and the tolling systems that they're talking about on bridges and roadways is going to drive people to look at alternative avenues, and that's going to drive the traffic it can be up even further. Um, we need to examine the use of all tools available to us to calm and regulate traffic. Hopefully by next month, I'll get some you know, more information about the red flex system. Clint has been an advocate for it for years. Um, I think now is the time. What is the red flex system? Red flex system is a computer system that's attached to different areas. And in certain cities, it's also mobile. If you moved around, put in the city. And if you drive too fast, it clicks a picture of you and gives you a ticket. Okay. Um, it it enables the police to continue to give tickets. Okay, but this is just an extension of that. That you can cover more areas, you can cover more times, you can cover more. You know, get a baseline. The existence of it tends to its goal is not to generate revenue. Its goal is to have no tickets. Because having no tickets means that everybody's driving slowly. I went to the Lake City Conference last week. Mm -hmm. And, and the, during the, at the trade show, there was another company that offered some of their services. And I did pick up a brochure, however, I failed to remember to bring it today. So I will get it to you. Um, it's called, well, I, in my opinion, appropriately named Stalker, um, but I thought I'll bring you the flyer and so you can look into it for comparison. <laughs> it's a red flex. I mean, yeah, and I don't care what company is it. Yeah, I just thought, well, red flex might not be the only game yeah. out there, so no, I, I picked up the flyer, but I love the little brochure comment. I'll get it to you. I'm trying, to, trying to get red flex on the phone has been a challenge, um, but anyway. Any questions? Oh, I didn't sign that. Jeff. You could just add any questions. Oh, uh, and, and message me about Carmen. And okay, Jan. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? I mean, I'll try to. Oh, good job. I'll try to jazz it up a little bit. But we do need to have a meeting with the city. We need to have the next meeting decide if we want to endorse this kind of a process, available tool, and then have a presentation to the city um, to use. The system on 99, a system on 99, whatever it is, you know, the use on 99 would not require a change in state law. But to be able to use it in within the city on the city streets, you need to get legislative approval. And so at the very least, I would recommend that if we do go with recommending such a system, that we also recommend that the city 
to ask for legislative change to allow the system to be used in the streets of Canby, such as Beaverton and other places, other cities have gotten approval. They don't have to implement it, but as you plan in the future, ask for approval now so that you can utilize it when you feel you need it. My feeling is we need it, but somebody else may disagree, but at least get approval so it's in your tool belt so that you can utilize when it becomes necessary. So that I will revise to write that into the suggestion so that you will have it for next month's meeting. So please be ready for that. Any questions? I might just maybe add a comment that um, I think after next month's meeting, I'd be happy to go with you. Uh, we could make an appointment with uh, Chief Tro and uh, go to his office and just kind of point out our concerns and point out uh, you know, the growing problem when there's as more and more citizens moving to Canby, uh, growing concerns over speed and you know, wanting to support the efforts of the police department and really uh, seeing if we can get uh, Chief Tro to be okay with the pursuit of this because we don't, uh, the council, in my opinion, would certainly not support something if it didn't have the blessing of Chief Tro. Would that be somewhat accurate, Tracy? So I'll make a comment on that. I know in the past, that he has been not for it. Um, and I think a lot of it goes to the public perception of that it is a money driven thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so I know in the past he has been against it, uh, but I could be wrong about now. And if I could uh, add something to that that I think would take a lot of the burden off the police department and off of us, I mean, I don't mind carrying burden, but uh, you know, I think it'd be a good exercise. If we have a baseline set of numbers from the last time it was run, and if we could get a new set of numbers and then ask our citizenry, um, you know, what they think. We really clearly think this is a problem. We clearly have this recommendation. And if the chief is okay with that approach, if the citizens want to pursue it, then uh, that might be a, a way of taking the burden off of all of you. I mean, Officer, oh, Officer Miller, I'm sure you've heard Citizen one, citizen two, citizen three, all complaining about speed. And you guys can't be everywhere. Right. So um, this system will address it. You know, at least it'll bring the curve, the, the rate down. And its purpose is not to generate income it the purpose is to calm traffic down um, what could i question the could we i don't know if it's possible to do that survey of the citizens first on so that like like a city poll i think if i can interrupt you i think in order to make that really worthwhile because we have a baseline set of numbers, because the community has grown dramatically since the last time that was put out, I firmly believe that if we ran those numbers again in the same locations, the problem has gotten considerably worse. And so we go to the citizenry with that information. Right. Like first, in my first yeah. and say, you know, this is aimed towards those that are not in or from this city. Mm -hmm. To possibly come or to, I don't want to say come around the chief's uh, interpretation of it's a money maker, but with the goal of it not making money at all and the support of the citizens, we're lucky enough that the vote says yes. Then we hit the chief up with it and say, hey, we've got one, two, three, all in favor. We just need your sign off. And hopefully that will persuade you strong. What would be your sense of council, the President Kinsley, on the uh, mode of the council towards something like this? Um, the current council, 
probably get a toss up whether or not that support. Um, about the city manager. City manager will do whatever the council asks. So it's not, it's, I, I love Scott has not his job out of him. Did the attorney have a strong opinion? Uh, I don't know. Um, I haven't asked Joe recently. I don't think he was much for it last time around. Okay. Um, it would take it would take citizens watching it to sway the council, I believe. Um, but I do believe if you're going to go to the council for your poll, you need to have you need to have not just the red flex data from last time and the prove up increase, but really like a good narrative of what the, what the red flex system is and what it does so that people Correct. understand that it's, you know, not Correct. just a stock red stat. Right. So. And then also have some supporting data from some of the neighboring communities that have used this type exactly. of thing and what yeah. their experience has been from the police department. The trick's going to be getting all of that very valuable information distilled down into something small enough that they'll actually read because otherwise it's too long yeah. to read it won't but take the poll. Yeah. So that's the, that's the tough balance you have. There's they have a lot of information you need to get out there, but no one wants to spend more than 90 seconds reading something. So okay. thank you. So we need to do something. Whether it succeeds or not, I always do yes. we need to do our best. Whether we've accomplished our goal is it doesn't always matter sometimes just do our best so that we can sleep at night that we try our best okay moving on to the city staff reports police thank you officer miller for your report appreciate it everybody has a copy of it uh, so yeah we have Little bit higher citation numbers. Uh, I've been on the road now. I don't have a recruit, so those numbers have gone up a little bit. Uh, I've been out there doing a little bit of work. Uh, DUI arrests, you're at seven. Uh, that's actually, in my experience, low for a month for us. Uh, traffic crimes, so reckless driving, DUI, um, I think the seven goes into that as well. Uh, and that shows kind of the number of the injury and non injury crashes that we had and hit runs. Uh, a lot of the hit runs were in parking lots. Um, we have 11, 11 traffic complaints throughout the city. Um, and then this is just a location of all the crashes that we took that required case numbers. Um, <laughs> Very good. I give you credit. <laughs> so, as you can see, a lot of the addresses like 1401 Southeast First, those are Fred Meyer, 109 Southeast First, that's 711. Uh, those were all either parking lots or they happen on. Uh, 99 right in front of Fred Meyer. Uh, the call, caller will often just say that it's right in front of Fred Meyer, so they'll put that address in there. But um, still, a lot of those are in parking lots. Um, and then I had another one that I had sent. I think it's the actual word. Is it the, is it the word document? So I organized kind of the Exact. There we, go. there we go. So this is just a list of different citations that were issued, and they're just in categories. So people driving on their phones, there's 23 citations for that. Uh, a lot of driving uninsured. There's a lot of people out there that are uninsured. It's kind of scary. Um, and a couple people driving suspended, violation of the criminal. There was only four people. Uh, speeding, there were 68. A lot of those are the school zones. Uh, the elementary on IV has been uh, pretty ridiculous. Uh, I can sit there and within two minutes or less for somebody to 12 to 15 miles. The elementary is on South IV Street uh, between uh, 13th yeah. Avenue and uh, like 8th Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and then Baker Prairie uh, on Southeast Township Road. And then, yeah, you can see this. Field of HR control devices, seatbelts, and uh, the crosswalk. Uh, those are all from a crosswalk detail that we did on Township Road at Focused. Uh, we did our uh, crosswalk enforcement operation. 30 people driving across the street that you caught. Uh, <laughs> That's a lot of people. Yeah, driving. so driving on a shirt and driving suspended. Uh, yeah, and 30, yeah, so 60 total that you caught. That's, that's 
Wow. Can I ask a question? A lot. Um, on your DUI, um, is the ratio of alcohol versus other impairments still predominantly alcohol? Or? Uh, I would say it's there's there's been quite a few drug DUIs, um, and so a lot of times officers aren't so proficient in being able to recognize that. But a lot of our newer guys are doing more training and how to recognize that. And there's a couple of our newer guys in particular that are finding uh, cannabis and marijuana DUIs uh, pretty frequently. So thanks for everything you guys do. Thank you. You can for all the citizens, you can see that there's enforcement going on. It's just that the level of non-compliance is a lot. <laughs> I just have one more thing. So uh, next month on November 17th, uh, we just started doing these multi-agency traffic missions. Uh, we basically bounce back and forth between cities. Uh, so Milwaukee, Lake Oswego, Oregon City, uh, Canby, uh, they all pitch in on the Clackamas County as well. They all pitch in officers every month and we just rotate cities. Uh, so on November 17th, it's going to be Canby's. Um, so you'll probably see a lot of here, traffic enforcement throughout the entire city. So, so that old adage, hope he's not my jurisdiction, shouldn't be paying attention to anymore. Is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he might give me a ticket. Okay. He won't announce that. Well, it's my own. It's being recorded right now. Yeah, it'll, it'll, be on the, uh, it'll be posted on our Facebook page, oh, okay. the police page. So, we like guys to, are nice guys. We like to notify people in advance. <laughs> We still can't catch them all, even though we got you know a lot of cops out. But we still do our best to educate people and let them know that we're going to be out there. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. In front of me. Not you. No, I promise I wouldn't talk, but I just go. Okay. Well, at least I, was, I wanted to amplify you know, an encouraging word to that presence because I just from a I've been around a while, right? I, you know, and I know still criminal quite a bit over the, the valley. Well, you know what, to this day, when I go through gas, I slow down. When I go through Amazon, I slow down. Because they have a track record, historically, that there are people around watching you, and you will get that. And you know what, I, I do believe that your presence, and then this uh, enhanced pitching in. Now, we may not see it because of the humongous growth and the infrastructure that's not in place at the moment, basically. But I do believe, you know, people people just zone out driving. They, you know, I, I, I watch it a lot on Maple, folks going to basically, you know, their tea times, their zone. And it just takes discipline and, and the word getting out like, oh, man, you know, I'm just making, you slow down on me. And it becomes a part of your life. And, you know, then you don't have to depend so much on somebody that you order. You're still good. I mean, it's still good. You can, but I think that as a word of encouragement, yeah. you probably yeah. feel, ah, and I'm not doing it. I'm not handling it. But, you know, you still are chipping away at it. Yeah. And it helps. Yeah. I really would provide that encouraging word. It helps. People will. You're gradually training. I don't know if it's possible, um, but on behalf of the Traffic Safety Committee, if impossible for your detail that day, spend a little extra time on territorial. Yeah, so I actually do a mission ops plan for that, and it goes out to everybody that's participating. I put the focus areas of territorial is one of the main focus areas. All right, so. so that way we can address them. Yeah. Uh, public works. Any, any thoughts and comments? Sure. Just, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we're, uh, as you can see, we're making headway on our uh, four way stop project out there. They're getting ready to set up forms for foreign sidewalk. Spencer's been overseeing that project out there, so it's going slow but good. Hopefully, we'll be further than Logan Street. They're over there, we'll come through right now. So, yeah, we'll get yeah we'll see. Yeah, um, the city administrator just wanted me to follow up with you guys on this. You guys sent him two letters. One of them was for the right turns out of the... Out of the McDonald's and the 7-Eleven. Yes. Yeah, and what do you guys want to do with that? Um, I've talked to ODOT. I don't know, do we want to... 
That's I didn't want to leave you guys hanging if he didn't either on that. Is there something that the city staff needs to be doing? Well, well, McDonald's had one that I could regurgitate with our whatever. McDonald's used to have the right turn only coming out of their drive through line onto the net. Then they shut down McDonald's for the longest while they remodeled. And then when they reopened, the sign was gone. So can we just make them put it back up or do we have different people put on? Yes. And we'd like an add one at the right turn only out of the 7 Eleven, but we don't know if we can owe that permission or if we can just tell the business. You need to do and they can be car wash. That was another. Uh, oh, and they can be car wash. Yeah. Those are, you know, ODOT is operating on a delusional point of view. Yeah, those are really dangerous. I can't. I, 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 they, I they, cannot they, get through to ODOT on anything on 99. Nothing. They will not listen to me. So do we just anything. do it and then beg for forgiveness if they don't like it? Uh, uh. Well, yeah. well, I think that well, citizens, as, as, as a citizen, you could, uh, but as a city, if you want to run it by the attorney, if we I have to sign up. Now, if the business owner, <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to Jeremy. If, if, if the it. business owner, like let's take Candy Car Wash as an example, if they wanted it, would that help carry a lot of weight? But you know, the ridiculousness is anybody who has any common sense could sit at that thing and say, making a right turn at those in get people in, out of their driveway is going to get right. somebody <laughs> killed. I was, I mean, you know, I mean, it is just the traffic. At the, that intersection, it's just horrendous. I was in a bad vehicle accident myself in a city vehicle because I was in the fast lane and someone waved someone out to make a left and they came out and, I, and hit, they T boned me. Yeah, you, you, you swerved yeah. into that. I swerved, but it would have been bad. I mean, it was yeah, a, I mean but you know, I, I, it's multiple lanes <laughs> there. We, we don't know what to do though. Awesome. As far as to, you know, what the traffic safety, we got your letter. ODOT is just basically telling me nothing. They're, they're, I mean, you don't have enough accidents. None of people have died. You got it. There's a, there's a figure amount on a number before they'll act. So we don't have any jurisdiction. I hate saying this. But I don't know what the but city is. We, 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 we have jurisdiction on this, the city where the, where the business is. Put the sign, but it's directing traffic onto their yeah. highway. Yeah. What if our uh, safety committee were to, if you gave us the contact info and we went right to ODOT and we point out what a problem this is, would that tell me? We've sent emails, I've sent emails to these guys and yeah. gotten back from them about you don't have enough accidents yet. Yeah, what was you, you only have seven accidents a yeah. year at that no, they, intersection. They you need it, to have it's an 12. Honor. I mean, it's like. So the answer is no, or they, they will not sure. put a sign up. And you won't, you won't make, well, then okay. help us pay for it. For no. Okay. My opinion is the city should send a letter to ODA informing them that we have identified a significant traffic problem that you are ignoring, that you are liable for any hurt or damage to people because you failed to implement even the simplest idea. Now, the cities have that willingness to do that. That would have to go, Joe would have to go with that. And I agree. But I, uh, and I can follow that back up with Scott. That there's, if there's, if, if the people, I don't, I'm, I'm just speaking as an individual. Would you guys endorse that? I, well, I think we should I talk to the city attorney and see what he recommends. he recommends. I think so, Tracy. Yeah. I think that. I think she, we kind of need the four of us. Can meet. If you want to go with Scott and Joe and see when we can do that, I will. That'd kind of be great. Okay. Yes. And then the other thing, there was another letter, was it over the parking, I think. Oh, that you wanted me to follow up with you guys. Wasn't that it? Wasn't that the other? No, I think the other one wasn't the other letter for ODOT, the, the wonky red lights. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, there's two red lights. lights for one lane. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we wanted we, them to remove this. We we went there light. too. We we talked to them about that too. And, and they're not going to remove it to some of the crashes. Like it's actual. That's actually their backup. That's their safety. If one burns out, that isn't that what they told us? No, they, they come up with a different excuse. Every time, every there's time. A different excuse, so, but they are not changing it. Is that the one by Fred Myers? It's confusing if you're not from here and you don't know yeah. it because it. Yeah. 
Well, right, because it looks like it, there's it looks like there's a left turn yes. lane, and it, so it looks like there should be three lanes, but there's only two. I, lanes. I even talked to the maintenance guy because I used to work with him, John Sapp. He does it. He uh, was going to try to change so you know, okay. the the flatter so you can't uh, see it yeah. in the other lane. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah, see yeah. that yeah. 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 that's two well, lines in the same lane. He was going to try to change that so it covered it, but the purpose they said it was left turn. The purpose they said to me is. That's for if you're at the intersection and you're behind a big truck, you can still see the light. What's happening? And to me, it's like it makes no sense to me. I don't like the movie. So what the heck? Yeah, no, I I think they screwed up and they just don't want to own up. I think so too. I think that there is money. There is some standards about how far away from the mass everything is. I remember one class I went. They. The, everything I've ever gone to about traffic lights for this, there's a different, different excuse. story every different. time. I don't know if they know how or why they just hide these sometimes. No, it's crazy. So we, that, you see that we were well, we can else. have that on to our discussion because yeah, on this planet, there is a strongly worded letter to a lot that if there's a major right, accident, well, we've got so many here. here. <coughs> the, the white stripes by the Safeway uh, intersection there. That little island and Burgerville, there's that nothing's painted there. Well, it's very dull. You go to uh, Safeway. <laughs> Traveling through town. Yeah. Well, Safeway. Like, up there, we, we, you have to turn into the Safeway parking lot off of 99. Oh, the center turn lane? Yeah, see, yeah, here. Yeah, all that's pretty. Well, but it's not as bright as it looks in that picture there. You know, this picture a year old, so uh, okay. I thought that was it was brought up last time, but not maybe refresh. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions for public works? So just to recap what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to set up a meeting with Councillor Hensley and Joe, Lindsay and Scott. Did I say Councillor Hensley yes. or Councillor Lindsay? Okay, good. Joe, Scott, and Tracy and I are going to sit and, come and talk about those two letters that were recommended and the direction we can go on that. Okay. Uh, you need me there, I will gladly join you guys. I'm okay. Sure you don't need me, but if you do, I also go on my help. Uh, Council. I don't really have much to report. I have a question for you. Ask questions. There we go. Can you, can you tell us uh, what exciting new things are going on at the old city hall? We had a ribbon cutting yesterday and a little tour. I'm sorry if none of you knew about it. It was on the uh, city Facebook page, I believe, where it was advertised. But uh, they've done a beautiful job restoring that building. And um, I can report that the rumors of a steakhouse are inaccurate. An Italian restaurant are right accurate. There are no tenants currently lined up for so any is it set up for one pretty It is set thing. up for a potential of three. Um, the the firehouse section is, is ready to be occupied for a tenant. The we're in city hall and the, the council uh, conference room. And I don't know if you're on council with the old building. Oh, you were. So you remember where we used to have the conference room, yeah. Ken's office? Okay. That portion, um, beautiful wood floors in there now. So pretty. But anyway, that could be a spot. And then it's not done yet downstairs, but they're they're talking about finishing that out for like a speakeasy type of a business. Um, that would require an ADA uh, elevator lift to go in, however. So that space isn't finished yet, but they could potentially have three tenants in that mm -hmm. building. And if you didn't go, I don't know if it's still available to go see if the construction guys will let you, but the jailhouse is, uh, was open yesterday. So you could see the old 1915 jail, uh, the, the jail doors. No, it was kind of fun. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, and then the next door building is, they've done a lot of work inside there. The, the beams are all exposed. It's absolutely gorgeous. In my opinion, I like that rustic stuff though. Um, but also no tenants. Um, I'm kicking the tires on that either. The, 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 old, the old PD. Okay, and then one last question. Uh, any updates on the uh, old library? I haven't heard any movement on that lately. I know that Oregon City Brewing is still planning to move forward, but I haven't heard anything we, lately. We know? have another pre-app coming on that because they've changed They've changed it so drastic. Gone hard and felt we got to review it again. 
So it's going Change back it again since the removal of the rooftop bar. I knew that, but then no, I think it that. Again. No, I think that. Oh, okay. I think that, that's what triggered it. Yeah, it was such a drastic. We need to go through the process with all of us again. So, so they're not going to do that anymore. The uh, rooftop no, is gone. They, they decided I think that was it was cost prohibitive for the yeah. structure they were going to need to do. Yeah. Never fear, there'll still be a rooftop bar in town. Yeah. Ken Argati is still moving forward on this project. So. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> no, that's all I know. So, any other Thank questions from anyone much. else? Board members? Uh, Gary? Not much put into this uh, discussion other than when somebody waves a car, well, they're trying to be polite. So they wave somebody by being polite. And like you said, they put right your path of travel. If you wave somebody by, you are taking responsibility mm -hmm. for that person. He was issued a ticket for what he did. Uh, Jeremy Halstead issued a ticket to that because the, it was a lady and she had been doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, he had it. Yeah, you so see that all the time in our, our city. You know, people trying to be polite, they will. <coughs> they have they blacked out windows, you don't know what they're doing. Oh, the windows, windows, you know, yeah. give and them I've taken at least two head on crashes there for people trying to left out of the. Uh, and the other problem is this traffic in the afternoon gets stacked up there at Ivy. So there's a line of traffic, and people get impatient to turn left in the left turn lane by 7 yes. Eleven. Uh, yeah. And they're bombing down that middle lane, and yeah. people are turning left. And there's a head on. Is there a way that you Get us some data about that intersection for our talk with the bot. Possibly. Yeah. Please. Yeah. That would, be that would help. Yeah. Thank you. No. Yes. Uh, Cliff. I'm not going to report. Thank you very much. Though. And Eric? My mapping system will be presented next month. Game will be. If you want to come down before the meeting, let us know. Try it out. Yeah, I, I got pretty close. I think I. To do it. Okay. That's going to be our efforts to identify all of the everybody that crashes to, to see if there's a, a pattern. Okay. Um, last thing on, I wanted to share on the, my area is um, I sent you guys a copy of, a, letter, of, of a, a story that appeared in the Oregonian, and I also sent an email to um, uh, Scott, our Council Hansley, and um, and Mr. Lindsay, uh, it, it talks about the city, cities, there are several cities in the state that are suing the state over their new over parking reform. Uh, please read the story. And what it is, is the state is coming out with regulations to affect climate change, which I support uh, dealing with climate change. But in the process, what they're trying to do is uh, restrict the need to create parking spaces in development and uh, reducing the impact or requirements that the city can impose on a, on a developer to provide adequate spaces of parking. Their thoughts is they're going to try to force people not to drive their cars as much. And it's like ride bikes. And I, I've written the city saying that we should join in the suit. Now, it's just, it, it, there's number of cities uh, including including Kaiser, Medford, Grants Pass, Happy Valley, Cornelius, uh, Hillsboro, Tualatin, Troutdale are all suing the city, the state over this because they say, and I'm feeling like Camby should sue too to say we need to continue to have jurisdiction over deciding how much parking should be required in for each development. I mean, we have when developers do not provide the park adequate parking, what happens, it spills over into the streets. And the streets get filled up, and you can't make a good adequate turn. You can't see what speedy cars are going by. It just creates more havoc. I mean, you know, if they're going to build infrastructure, Put in a complete mass transit system before you re start cutting back. And even then, in Portland, it hasn't really worked. Um, People like their cars. So restricting the parking is going to make them not have a car. It's going to make the park it somewhere in the, in the program. To do that, what, what city needs for them? Do they need a letter from the Traffic Safety Committee and possibly planning together? A joint letter saying we need to committees. Want the city to join it, on this. Well, 
really want to get the city. It already passed the deadline to join the scoop. It was what, October 11th. Well, you can always try to jump in. Now. Yes. So I, I, I will send you, you folks the email that I sent to. The I don't Pardon me? Nobody replied. But I didn't. I I only wrote it for myself because I did not get approval for you guys to to send it. But I will send the email out to you so that you will know what I wrote, and we can talk about it next month about whether we want to do something about this. I think it's important because when you well, I have on it, make a motion to do it now. I mean, it's, it's for I, I would prefer you guys read first. Did you read the article? I sent you the article. Yeah. To read the article, read my little note, and then we'll take action. Okay. Uh, any other business for the good of the order? If not, thank you very much for your time and effort and, and, and willingness to be attended. Thank you for your time. You're always welcome, folks.